Hello, my fellow Americans. How many of you know that America is the greatest nation on the face of the planet, the greatest success story the world has ever known? My friends, today we need to realize, as Lincoln realized standing on the battlefield of Gettysburg, that we are engaged right now in a great battle testing whether or not this nation or any nation so conceived and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal can long endure. My friends, today, you and I must answer this question if in fact our republic is to remain secure. We must understand that we are on that battlefield and this is a battle that we must not lose. Our nation is endangered and we must stand together to save her. I was asked some time ago by a refugee from an Eastern Bloc country. He asked me, CL, if America goes away, where do people go? And Americans, I don't know if you understand just how much the rest of the world looks to us for leadership. In the fullness of time, God brought forth a nation like ours, made up of people who we can point to in Acts 17 and 26, who were placed here divinely, you and I, in order to form a more perfect union of people who understand what freedom is because freedom works for each and every one of us. But my friends, what we are allowing to happen, and to my Caucasian friends in particular, and I can't hardly see you, but I'm sure you're about 99.9% .9 of this audience. But my question to you is this. What's happened to you? We remember a people I've never known you to be sheepish, but you're becoming sheepish. What has happened to you? This nation is made up of Washingtons, Hamiltons, and Alexanders. What's happened to you? What's happened to the proud heritage that all of us who come to this country look to with those Jeffersons and Lincolns. What's happened to you? Why have you stopped telling your story? And why have you allowed others to corrupt the great American story that all of us stand on? What happened to you? My friends, now we live, all of us, in a three-roomed house. And in that house, is the house of the future, the house of the present. But the room that we like spending most time in these days, and you're allowing yourselves to be led to that room and locked in it. We're spending more time in that room of the past. And my friends, if you walk into that room right now, you see the pictures on the wall. You see the things that happened in your grandparents' and parents' past, but there's not one piece of furniture in that room of the past. There's not one picture on the wall in that room of the past that you can popular, possibly manipulate. There's nothing you can change in that room of the past. There's nothing that I can do about my grandfather's past. There's nothing I can do about what happened to them getting to these shores. But I can tell you that I stand here today as the son, the great grandson of former slaves free in America. And I am glad, I'm glad that they endured. I'm glad that they survived. I'm glad that you survived. We are Americans. We are Americans because of their sacrifice. And so my friends, you need to understand that definitions are being changed on us every day. And when you change the definitions of gender, 
When you change the definitions of marriage, when you change the definition of nation, you change the destination of where our nation is going. And our young people are hearing the definitions that are changing the destinations of our nation. And their very birthright is being stolen from them while we stand here and watch what's happened to you. We are engaged, my friends, in a great battle, on a great battlefield. My grandfather was an illiterate man. I was very Afrocentric back in the day. In fact, I had a huge Afro. <laughs> I was coming down to the place that's been in our family for over 150 years, right after slavery. My great-grandfather and his brothers bought this piece of property. And I want to leave you with this. Some words of wisdom for an illiterate man to an America today. From an illiterate man for America today. I was coming across the field. He saw me coming. I had just driven up on the place and I had, was playing very loudly a song by James Brown on an eight-track tape deck. It caused more than the car I was driving. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> but grandfather heard the words and he strode toward me very deliberately. I could tell the old man was upset. And he got close enough to put his pulp wood cutting finger in my face. And he said these words, Sonny, that's what he called me. I didn't go through all that I went through so that you could be black. I went through all that I went through so that you could be free. Free. Free to go where I'll never go. Free to do what I'll never do. But above all, free to speak your mind. And my fellow Americans, here today I have to leave you now. Headed for Washington, D.C. But I want to leave you with this question. And it's a question that you must answer. Is there anybody here who loves America? Is there anybody here who will stand up for God and stand up for country? Stand up for the republic. That Americans, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. God bless you. God bless America.